Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the SimCity 4 Masterclass. My name is SmileyMK and in this video I'm going to talk to you about rail yards. Specifically, how to build them. This video is going to cover quite a few aspects of rail yards, mainly marshalling yards, uh, freight depots including container terminals and ballast sidings, TMDs or engine sheds as you might call them, and some wagon works. Techniques can also be used for carriage sidings, coal storage facilities, coal loading facilities, coal unloading facilities of minerals, anything you like. We're also going to do a bit of container terminals at the end. To start with, let's focus on the shunt yards. We're going to follow the standard layout for, for a rail yard. Extender. It all starts with the main line. We want to keep this main line free and clear for the through traffic to pass through either the passenger or the freight. That means that any yards we build should be off to the side, like this. Typically, uh, typically a shunt yard is arranged a bit like this. A track comes in and the tracks fan out from the middle. A bit like this. We want an efficient layout, so we keep the tracks together. And of course, you do the same on the other side, because we want a fruit shunt yard. Now that's one way to make a shunt yard. Another way we're going to adopt is to take advantage of some helpful lots that already exist and are available, available to download on the stacks. Those are the modular freight yard lots, which provide a quick and easy way and to get an efficient rail yard built easily. And what I really like about these lots is they have props on them, train props. So that gives you the impression of a functional rail yard. And as well, the tracks in the middle are kept clear for new arrivals or arrival or departing trains once they've been formed. That's quite important because it means we can use these middle sidings as, as reception sidings, which creates a nice realistic layout. Extend our sidings using the expansion and end lots. which is what we will do now. Okay, we'll get these the right way around. That should appear to be the wrong lots. These are the wrong lots, my apologies. We want it. is this section. It's actually the wrong around. Place end sections on the end to complete a nice fenced in rail yard. If we zoom in you will see that there's a nice fence around the rail yard, which is realistic. In the UK, at least, all railway property is fenced off. And we can add more fences later on, and we will do that. To access the rail yard, drag a section of rail through the rail yard itself to activate the paths through the lot. Drag out a couple of tiles. And now, we will need to convert to SDR, as happens in real life. Typically, lead-ins to freight yards are a single track. This one here. This one here. We use start pieces to extend the SDR. And we place them like so. Then we 
extend out. Have both tiles. Unfortunately, we don't have room to build a perfectly smooth transition, but in a freight yard, a small smooth curve is fine. However, on the main line, we do want to use the full curves. I place those like so. I'm actually not providing enough room for the yes. Build enough of the SDR to build the curve smoothly, so we need to build it again. Get it the right way around. Having done this, we need to provide a way for the trains to get to the other track from here. So, to provide for that, we will build a dual track crossover. We like every track to be accessible. That's quite important. For a nice efficient freight yard. And now we just do the same on the other side. Be careful to get the orientation correct. Be aware that the modular freight yard lots require power. And will abandon if you don't provide it. So we can have so let's hook up a temporary power source. Having built one, we can build another in the same way. Let's do that now. Let's have a look at some other things we can do. Why don't we build an engine shed a bit further down? We'll build it on this side. In this case, firstly test fit the lot to make sure it fits roughly correctly. I'm going to use the rectangle roundhouse which provides by WMP. Which provides a couple of nice things as well as some extra lots. It provides a nice engine shed as well as some extra accessories like a turntable, a washing facility, refueling and, other, and carriage sidings and other nice things. Because these already are SDR approaches, built starter pieces straight away. Be careful not to hover them over the over the lot itself. And drag out. Build connections to the SDR, like so. We need to keep the fan arrangement that is typically used in rail yards for a nice realistic look. Here, we can use the parallel SDR switch for a nice, efficient, and smooth transition. Think we have to in this case. We'll start a piece at the top, and we're done. And we can connect that up to the front, to the train yard. We're in the usual way. In fact, I think we have a bit of space here, so let's go ahead and smoothen out this curve. And that creates a lovely smooth transition. As usual, we'll need the dual, the dual rail crossover to allow access on all sides. Just like the freight yard lot, this will need power. So hook up. Just doing this in a quick and dirty way. It would appear these have abandoned due to commute time. 
these need road access as well so we will deal with that in a minute connect up connect up to the freight station using your existing branch to the freight yard in fact we can smoothen out this curve as well Our lots require road access to function so let's get that built now streets will do Remember we would like to keep our yard as efficient as possible let's keep the street now nice and tight We'd like to make our at the edge of the freight yard. We'll build an access road. And later on we'll put a fence around the whole complex. To make the road look to make the street look a bit better, we can add a sand texture. I'm gonna go for the Heberg's asphalt street. I would, I would avoid building roads across the main line. We don't want any inefficiency there. So let's build a separate load, road access system for this road. Sum it all up. Unfortunately, these are abandoned, so we will need to rebuild them. Excellent. The engine shed will need parking for the workers, so let's put that in now. Any any flat car park will do. Normally, I would use the Who Har Forty Seven parking lots for this, but to save video length, I'll just go for a standard prefab, prefab car park. one will do. So nicely transit enabled for the street which helps. We'll need a bit more parking than that. Let's get back to the action. With a wagon works. Now this works pretty much in the same way as a shunt yard and a freight yard. And an engine shed. We need to start We're building a single track route in.
And then we'll need to place our building for the wagon works. Any suitable engine shed style building will do. I'm using this Index ITS model, which looks quite nice. We've got a nice bypass siding here as well, which is nice and realistic. As usual, we want to fan out. Fortunately, the SDR does not support freeway points just yet, so we'll have to make the best of it. So we just have to do something similar. If desired. You can also place a small set of sidings on the side. Like so. We will need to add our connections. This is a double track lock. We need to place all the transition pieces to make it single track. Be very careful, as usual, when placing the transition pieces. You don't want the game to crash. Now adding the transitions on the other side. out in the usual way and for efficiency let's construct a couple and for capacity's sake let's construct a couple more sidings and now finally connect that out to our main line in the usual way and car parks to provide that extra little bit of detail And here we have a nice wagon works. Are we done yet? No, of course not. Let's add a ballast siding or two. To keep things efficient, we'll just keep it on this side. To keep things nice and separate, we we'll construct a separate line. Capacity. Convert. We'll convert this line to dual track rail.
probably need to demolish most of this line to convert it back to dual track rail. To add a ballast siding, we simply need to add some ballast. This can be done with MMPs. That's the wrong MMP. Simply fill the area in with MMPs, with MMP ballast. Finally, we've got everything we want. Coal and scrap will work in the same way. Just add, just replace the ballast with coal MMPs or scrap MMPs. Finally, to complete the picture. Let's add some detail. Security fence. And some extra props should suffice. Plus some concrete fillers. In my know, grass does exist in between tracks. It's commonly used. Let's put in some fillers. Finally, we'll add a security fence around the outside of the complex. For this, I'm using the mesh fence, which is available to download on the Simtropolis Exchange. To build a street technique, to build a fence quickly, we can use the street technique. Simply drag out a street. Like so. And then use it to orient the fence pieces. You can demolish the street afterwards. game will automatically stick to your, your street. Now the fencing is complete. I've missed a bit of a filler. Now the fencing is complete. We can add some extra detail using MMPs. Things like trucks and industrial junk are the order of the day here.
try and keep your detailing in comps like you see here. Because this is more true to real life. Don't worry about keeping it neat. Stuff is quite messy in real life. And there you have it. You can extend. You can go nuts on the detail there. But there you have it. That is a more or less complete rail yard in terms of everything you need. To end this video, let's very quickly go over a container terminal. After building the access, we will want to build the container port itself. We can do this using seaport lots. And add add extra trains as desired. And finish off with an end piece at the end. As with the standard freight yards, it should have a, the entrance to this should be single track. So I make it single track. To complete the picture, add in some container. Lots. Quite a few of them. Containers can be on both sides if you want. And multiple rows of containers if desired. As you can see here, our lots will need power as well. So let's just get a temporary power connection going. To fill in the gaps, we use the fillers. We use fillers to allow the trucks to come through. And if desired, And some little trucks. These are these trucks distribute the cranes and the containers and create the impression of a functional port, a functional terminal. So they're quite useful. Place them fairly randomly around the layout. Around the port on the terminal. Fill up with fillers. Finally, it's time to give it some straight access after possibly adding more details if we want. To do this, simply place the back end of a starter piece. Like so, and drag out the rest of the road as desired. This will give the impression of a a functional entrance into the port. Finish up. 
add more details if desired including the car park and finish up with a security fence and you can see this container terminal is taking shape and looks pretty good it's quite simple really obviously take the time to add more detail I'm running out of this test here so I'm doing a quick and dirty job but take the time to add more detail Finally, I didn't mention it before, well, I forgot to mention it, but you can add some highway light towers to this, to the freight yard, to make it more interesting and light up at night, which is nice. Use the large highway light centered. And various sensible places. To create an illuminated look. And there you have it, with a few simple tips and techniques, you can create a good looking, realistic rail yard. Obviously take the time to detail it properly, I did a quick and dirty job to save video length. You can create a good looking rail yard that is prototypically accurate, realistic and functional. Well, maybe not functional, but it will look functional. It also looks pretty good at night. You can also make a container terminal if you like. So I am going to leave it to that. Thank you for watching this video. If you'd like anything, me to cover anything else in the Masterclass series, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. I've been SmileyMK, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye for now.